This here is the brand new Fujifilm X-H2S, and uh, this is the uh, slightly older Rusty McBones. I just can't get rid of him. But this camera, I've taken to a music festival. I've filmed six gigs professionally with it. I've taken it to four different cities. Yeah, it's just been living in my backpack for the better part of three weeks. I've definitely got a lot of thoughts about it. Yeah, you can sit down. Most of those thoughts are very positive. This is a joy to shoot on, but uh, there are quite a few disappointments for me as well. Let's get into it. This camera is the successor to 2018's X-H1, which is a camera I thoroughly enjoyed using. Now that a couple have been released, the X-H lineup kind of feels like Fujifilm's experimental lineup. They kind of stack them with a bunch of new innovations. And then a lot of those features end up on the Svelte X-T lineup anyway. There's a lot to love about Fujifilm. I love their glass, their lenses are just incredible, and they always look a little bit unique compared to other cameras. I love the film simulations that these come with. They have some really cool looks, and they're always iterating on that. They look kind of like old school cameras, and a lot of that is down to uh, these dials on the top here. These basically allow you to control control everything from ISO, the shutter speed, your drive, so how many photos you're gonna take at once, switching between stills and movie mode, and even the exposure compensation on the right here. You even have a little switch for your autofocus, which I really love. Actually, yeah, that's my first issue with the X-H2S. It doesn't have those dials. Yeah, all that stuff that you can switch and play with even when the camera's off, so you can have it ready to go when you turn it on, that's all gone. You're instead uh, getting the uh, PASM dial on the left here, and that's it. The rest is all done by button presses. This isn't what I buy Fuji films for. So what this allows you to do is switch between manual, aperture priority, uh, shutter priority, and program, and um, a bunch of other custom modes that you can program into this as well. It's not so much that I don't like this dial, it's the fact that all these manual dials are missing because now all of the functionality that used to sit on those dials sits on button presses. And that actually becomes really annoying really quickly. The big one that is still just baffling me is ISO. So there is a dedicated ISO button here now rather than the dial, and that's fine. You press the ISO button, you flick through and pick the ISO that you want. The problem is, sometimes I want to switch ISO on the fly. On the previous model, the X-T4, you've got the dial at the top, but you can also map ISO to one of the scroll wheels. That is not even possible on the X-H2S. The only way to change it is either by setting it on one of the custom modes or pressing ISO and then buttoning through a bunch of times until you reach the number you want. I just don't understand that. The other button that's just baffling to me is the autofocus button here. Previous X-Series cameras have a manual switch to change between the three autofocus settings. That's not the case here. Instead, you have to press a button and then use the arrow buttons to choose the one you want to switch to. This might sound minor, but if you're shooting something fast paced like I was with music uh, for photography, that's an extra few button presses where you're looking at your camera rather than just knowing the muscle memory to switch stuff. And on video, it's even worse because you can't change it while you're recording. You have to stop recording, switch it over, and then press record again. There is a way around this, and this is a new feature to the X-H2S, I believe. Uh, you are able to have it in both autofocus and manual mode at the same time, and it just switches to manual when you touch the lens here. This was a really welcome feature, and it's one I hope comes to other Fujifilm cameras, but it isn't really a replacement for the good old switch and dials. That's all my gripes, I promise. Let's talk about the stuff that actually has made my life better. And my favorite thing um, that I can show you right now is the uh, little flaps on the side here. So behind door number one, an HDMI port. It's an actual wide HDMI, not a micro like most other Fujifilms. You've also got a nice little door for the mic and that just flaps open here. And this is really exciting. You also have, for the first time ever, I believe, in an X-Series camera, the headphone jack. The reason this is so exciting is because the X-T4 and pretty much every X-Series camera before it, you would have to get a battery grip like this in order to unlock the uh, headphone jack. Why? I don't know. I guess they couldn't fit it on the actual camera itself and it's not that important if you're just using them for photography. Now it's just on the camera and that is absolutely amazing. And finally, there's a USB-C port which you can use to charge the batteries or uh, power the camera while you're shooting. Speaking of, the battery is amazing. I noticed while we were shooting live music, the battery was um, lasting a fair bit longer than the X-T4, which was pretty surprising. It wasn't a huge difference, but when I was recording some music sets with these, this was at the back getting a wide, and uh, this was in my hands rolling, uh, and they were both on for about an hour at a time. This one was ending at about 60% battery, which is really impressive, and this would normally sit around 30 to 40%. 
Despite being the same battery, this one actually performed a lot better. It's anecdotal, um, so, you know, not scientific evidence, but uh, it did happen enough where I was like, hmm, okay, there's something to this. One of the main features of the XH lineup, which I've always loved, but always feels a little uh, <laughs> irrelevant, I guess, is the little e-ink screen on the top here. It just kind of shows you a bunch of stats about the camera, like how much time you've got left on the card, what the exposure comp is, your ISO, your white balance, your battery, stuff like that. When it's off, it only shows the battery and how much space is left on the card. So on the XH1, that made a lot more sense because you could already see what your shutter speed and your ISO were set to because of the dial which I miss. On this one, you still only get the uh, the battery and the time on the card. So you have no idea what your settings are unless you've memorized what your customs are. It's certainly not a bad thing that it's here. It's definitely cool. And I do like checking it uh, mostly for the battery when the camera's off, but um, it never felt super necessary. It's quite easy to just turn your camera on and look at the screen rather than just looking at the top here. Yeah, especially if you need to turn the camera on to get access to these settings. Another thing I love about this camera is the grip. I always found that the uh, XT lineup, their grips were a little too small, so I would nearly always buy the battery grip, so it kind of extends it out. Um, this one has a chunkier grip, much like the X-H1, but this one just fits my hand so well, man. I could just hold this all day and just feel like a camera king. It just is so comfortable to shoot on. If we flip over to the other side of the camera, we have SD slots, and you might notice it no longer has two SD cards like most of the other X-Series have. It has one SD card and one CF Express. CF Express is really expensive, so uh, I didn't use it, but that is actually what unlocks a lot of the really good functions out of this camera. So yeah, unfortunately I didn't get to try them. Yeah, if you're buying this camera for high bitrate ProRes or those really fast burst modes, you're gonna have to buy a couple of CF Express cards and that makes this camera even more expensive than it already is. Sorry, SD cards just don't cut it. Let's talk about what this was actually like to shoot on in the field. Photography wise, most of my photography was done at Splendor in the Grass, which is a music festival here in Australia. The thing that I noticed the most was the autofocus is just absolutely way more improved. It takes lenses that you didn't think had good autofocus and just makes them work. Like they, every lens I tried, the autofocus just nailed it. Some were still a little slow, but it was a huge improvement over the X-T4. And that's probably the thing I'm gonna miss most about the X-H2S when I have to give it back. This camera also has an autofocus setting that I've never seen on a Fujifilm before, and that's subject detection setting. It's not really there yet. The options are pretty sparse. Like you've basically got a few different modes of transport and uh, bird or animal. <laughs> I mean, birds are animals in my eyes, then or are they robots? Maybe Fujifilm knows something that we don't. It wasn't consistent enough that I would rely on it. The regular autofocus is amazing and um, that was fine most of the time. Yeah, once I kind of, oh, Rusty's back. Um, yeah, once I kind of sorted out the settings and uh, struggling with the lack of dials, I found that this always got the shot that I wanted and it always looked exactly how I wanted it to. So it didn't take me long to adapt to it. Because of that autofocus, I just really, really rate this as a photographer's camera. Uh, video is a bit different. Um, most of the videos that I shot on this were at those six music gigs and uh, my last YouTube video, which is about the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Go check that out. That is pretty much all shot on the Fujifilm in 6K. It only records 6K in a 3-2 aspect ratio. Basically, it's making full use of the sensor. But hey, I am not complaining. Access to 6K is awesome. Couple of other video highlights I noticed while shooting, the in-body image stabilization is as good as ever. This is some handheld footage at 140mm, and yeah, it's still very smooth. I'm very impressed with that. Of course, the autofocus is just as amazing as it is in the photography mode, and probably most exciting for people who like to film for longer than half an hour. This can record uninterrupted for up to 240 minutes. With those music gigs we were shooting, the X-T4 was sitting up the back getting a wide, and I had to keep going back every 25 minutes to like reset it and press record again because that has a limit of 30 minutes. I should have just put this at the back. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, yeah, this was in my hands and I was basically recording as long as I wanted to. Yeah, once you add up all of these features, including the dedicated ports on the side here, it's just the most capable video camera Fujifilm's ever released. 
If you are gonna use this to roll for a really long time and uh, probably are in a hot location, not like Melbourne, um, you may be able to invest in a uh, fan that you can stick on the back. There's actually two little uh, screw holes here that you can uh, screw the fan into. Uh, thankfully, I didn't need it. Um, the camera didn't overheat while I was shooting. But yeah, it's nice that it exists. If you work in really hot conditions or just run this camera into the ground with video, perhaps it might be worth picking up for you. So the question is, should you buy the Fujifilm X-H2S? Look, as, as a longtime Fujifilm user, I can safely say this is probably the best camera they've ever made in the X series. It just is absolutely a beast at getting the shots you need. The autofocus is insane. The speed that it can take photos is way over the top and it just has so many options for shooting video. So yes, overall, do buy it if you're looking for a new Fujifilm and just want the best camera that will get the shot. Uh, just know you may have to uh, relearn a little bit about Fujifilm if you're already coming from the system. All of those gripes I have with usability while shooting on this are pretty much able to be fixed with uh, firmware updates though. So just being able to map ISO to this wheel would be amazing. And also being able to change settings while mid recording would also unlock a lot of potential for this as well, I think. So, hey, Fujifilm, if you're listening, um, yeah, I've got a whole list of things that I want fixed on this. And if you fix them, I will buy this immediately. Honestly, just, you have my email, um, yeah. Fix this camera, it is so almost perfect.